Hello everyone and welcome back to new discussion and uh, in this uh, discussion we are going to have about the basis of remote sensing image interpretation or image representation that we will be discussing in this one that how an image is created or represented which we see on a screen or maybe on the printout uh, which is very very important because ultimately after all going through the electromagnetic radiation and uh, different wavelengths, different sensors uh, governing different laws, ultimately what we get through remote sensing satellites an image and how that image is represented in two dimensional space and uh, that is equally very important. So, this is what uh, we are going to discuss and uh, that image basically a, a digital image which I am talking is a two dimensional representation of uh, objects which are present in the real world. And uh, this uh, representation uh, is a uh, we, we say as remote sensing images is a part of the earth surface as seen from space because uh, the distance and the depending on the resolution uh, we do not see the entire earth at in one go. Uh, anyway by whatever design we are having the maximum we can see the half of the earth and but uh, in higher spatial resolution data or relatively even coarser spatial resolution data the parts of the earth or part of the earth is only seen here not the entire uh, thing which is seen. So, the image and uh, generally uh, when it is transmitted by the satellite is it digital but image can be also analog after either displaying on the screen or maybe in the print form. So, that images uh, can be analog or digital. But uh, in this course most of the time we are going to discuss only about the digital images. And uh, aerial photographs earlier when we did not have the current remote sensing technology then aerial photographs are examples of analog images though they are photographs they were there were snapshots but in case of images these are scanned line by line and recorded. So, for example, if you take a picture of somebody using your digital camera then in one click entire scene is grabbed this is what we say snapshot. But uh, suppose if you put a document on a, a scanner or on a photocopy machine then it uh, then a scanner moves from and say left end to right end and it scans the image. The same way your satellite sensors also work. So, as satellite moves the sensor moves and it scans the part of the earth and create an image. So, that is major difference between a photograph and an image. A photograph is in a snapshot where an image is created line by line. So, a satellite image is acquired using electro electronic sensors which are uh, sensitive to electromagnetic waves and they are all in the digital form originally. Here I am taking one example and a zoomed part and also a digital num with digital numbers or we call them pixel numbers. So, pixel here is a an abbreviation which is stands for picture element. So, here a, a, this is a black and white or panchromatic image what we see here. And uh, though he, you, you are seeing uh, lines uh, here and in each line there are cells or pixels are here, but generally in the image you will not see these lines except uh, the, uh, the pixels are aligned like this in a two dimensional uh, matrix. Same way these lines are shown here just for our better understanding, but really in, in the system or in the memory of computer these lines are not uh, there at all. Just for our understanding uh, we are using these lines. Now, since this is gray image, so various shades of grays are being used to represent uh, a part of the earth as shown here. Correspondingly uh, the digital numbers are also there. So, what you can notice? that uh, digital numbers 0 are having a completely corresponding black color and whereas digital number like 255 is having white color and rest of our white shade of gray and rest of the pixels are having 
the shades between two extreme shades or extreme color one is the black another one is the white and rest are in between so uh, this is an example of 8 bit uh, image and here is an example of a black and white image so a digital image now we can define that a digital image is a two dimensional matrix or array of pixels important thing here also one important thing which you can notice that the the shape of the cell or pixel is a square a square in shape however overall shape of an image need not to be square it can be also rectangular like this also but still by definition it would be a two dimensional matrix what i mean is the number of rows and number of columns need not to be same they can be different and if they are different then overall shape of an image is going to be rectangular but if number of rows and columns are same then the overall image is going to be a square in shape however unit of an image is always a square in shape as we are seeing here and throughout that image the same size of uh, those squares are there these these squares are representing an average aerial uh, average area uh, aerial average of the ground so if suppose this uh, one square equal to 10 meter by 10 meter so 10 meter of 10 meter ground area is being represented by a single pixel value now if this is uh, this if i say this is visible channel that means whatever the reflection within 10 meter by 10 meter area on the ground an aerial average has been taken and sensor has recorded that value so the sensor itself uh, does that uh, part that it takes an average reflection if it is visible channel average reflection and record it in a form of a square or numbers but we see numbers but when we make an image or when image is made then the unit always in a square so i will repeat this part that overall shape of an image can be either square or rectangular that means number of rows and columns need not to be same if they are different then overall shape of an image is going to be rectangular but number of rows and columns are same then overall shape of an image will be a square however the unit of an image which is the pixel will always be square this is how uh, we represent all satellite images or all digital uh, photographs also in in modern days all represent a square area of the ground or or scene so uh, this is there and these lines which are uh, there it is just for our understanding they these lines in data itself or an image these lines do not exist there will be a continuous uh, uh, you know matrix arrays of pixels so each pixel has an intensity value it depends on if i am uh, seeing a, a thermal image thermal infrared image then that is the emittance value if i am seeing a visible channel then it's a reflection value and the intensity word has come here which decides if it is a 8 bit channel and intensity is uh, very poor or say in reflection is very poor then i may get a value near zero or maybe zero but if uh, if uh, that reflection is very high maybe like uh, fresh snow cover areas then my reflection value or the pixel value can be 255 so intensity that this is what the intensity means here that each pixel has an intensity value and in case of emittance the same thing that if high emittance is there then i may get in a black and white thermal infrared image i may get even 255 value in 8 bit scenario so each pixel has an intensity value represented by a digital pixel number digital number or pixel number and sometimes we also call dn in sort and a location address that is 
referenced by its rows and columns. So, location address that if I have to address this 0 value in this image, then this is uh, row number 1 and column number 6. If I have to address this 255 here, then it is this is row number 5 and column number 6. And so, this is how that is why it is referenced by its rows and column numbers. So, each pixel is having its location and image which is referenced and each pixel is representing an intensity value and pixel is an, a unit of an image. Now, uh, uh, that when, whenever we use this word unit that also means that uh, it is indivisible that means now I cannot divide. Some people claim that they, they can see inside a pixel or they call a sub pixel, but it is not really uh, possible. So, what I say here that once an image has been acquired by a satellite or a sensor, then the spatial resolution of that image cannot be changed. So, once an image is acquired, the spatial resolution is frozen. This is a, a very appropriate but big statement. Once an image is acquired, the spatial resolution of an image is frozen. That means, if I take say example of this particular image which is being displayed, if that uh, the pixel is representing 10 by 10 that means 100 square meter area. Now, once I have got the image, can I change to uh, 1 meter, 1, one, uh, one meter uh, spatial resolution or cell size or pixel size? Though on computers I can change, but it will not improve the image quality no way it is going to improve no matter how interpolation techniques or neural network or fuzzy logic whatever I apply that is not going to improve the image quality. If that would have been possible if at all if that would have been possible then uh, there are sensors like NOAA AVHRR which provides data at 1 kilometer resolution that means 1000 meter resolution. So, we acquire an image at 1000 meter resolution and uh, by using computers and these uh, techniques of interpolations or some other techniques, we can create 1 meter resolution which is not possible. So, I repeat that sentence that once an image is acquired, spatial resolution cannot be changed. That means, the though by some image processing techniques, you can improve the quality of an image by enhancing the image, but I am talking about the spatial resolution. That means, uh, once it is taken then 10 by 10 pixel, one pixel value is registered by the sensor. Now, uh, we continue on this uh, pixel because pixel is a unit of an image and in remote sensing pixel matters lot. So, that is why we continue this discussion that uh, pixel is an unit of an image which uh, we have just mentioned and uh, therefore, it is indivisible and a digital image comprises of two dimensional array or two dimensional matrix of individual picture elements or in short pixel arranged in columns and rows which we are seeing here. Here the this one the yellow colored one is what one single pixel is there. Again lines which are just for our understanding in the real image lines will not be there these lines vertical and horizontal. So, each pixel represents an area on the earth surface. If these are the satellite images, then this is true that each pixel represents an area of the earth surface and the pixel value will represent the intensity at a particular wavelength. So, if we are talking visible, then the reflection, if it we are talking thermal infrared, then emittance. So, that represents the intensity. So, pixel has an intensity value and a location address that is number of rows and columns in a two dimensional image and therefore, no further details can be visualized inside a pixel because it is a unit and a unit is indivisible and I cannot see inside a pixel that is uh, one has to really remember. So, an image is a two dimensional matrix and therefore, can have only two shapes either square or rectangular. That means, number of rows and columns are same then a square shape image 
and if rows and columns are having different then rectangular shape image. And also a important statement that pixel of an image is always a square in shape. So unit is always a square in a square. So intensity value represents the measured physical quantity, maybe the reflection or solar radiance in a given wavelength band reflected from the ground. So maybe reflected when we are talking about visible or infrared may be emitted when we are talking about the thermal infrared or back scattered radar intensity if we are talking about microwave or passive microwave uh, part of EM spectrum. So the we are having satellite sensors in the reflected part, we are having satellite sensor in thermal infrared and of course we are also having in radar wavelength. So all kinds of sensors are available what they are recording intensity of a pixel. Now, uh, this value, the pixel value is normally an average value or I say aerial average value for the whole ground area covered by a pixel and uh, that has to be a single value and this value also has to be an integer number. This one has to remember in digital images, satellite images I am talking particularly, the cell value or pixel value is always an integer value that is whole number. We cannot have in decimals, uh, satellite images I am talking. Though in a normal mat matrix, two dimensional matrix, the, that can also be a real number which is true in case of digital elevation models. But in a digital image, satellite image, the pixel value will always be an integer or a whole number. So intensity of a pixel is digitized by the sensor on board of satellites recorded as a digital number or pixel value also we call DN or pixel value. And due to the finite storage capacity, we do not have the infinite storage. So every sensor on board of satellites will have a finite uh, storage. A digital number is stored with a finite number of bits and in a binary. Whether the recording is being done at 8 bits, maybe 10 bits, 11 bits. For example, normally uh, most of these uh, sensors are recording data at 8 bits, but sometimes they also go lower like uh, IRS uh, 1C, 1D pen, pen chromatic uh, band uh, we call as pen, PAN that used to record at 6 bits, whereas normal images are generally recorded in 8 bits. That means the pixel values can vary between 0 to 255. But if it is a 6 bits, then pixel values can vary between 0 to 63, total number 64. And NOAA AVHRR that uh, uh, records uh, in 11 bits. So the pixel values can vary in a very long range. So uh, this, this is by decided when the sensors are designed and they are recording. So the number of bits determine radiometric resolution. This is important here. The radiometric resolution of an image, higher this number, higher number of bits, higher the radiometric resolution because finer uh, details or slight change in reflection or emittance can be recorded if we are recording in 11 bit instead of 8 bit compared to 8 bit. So if we go for 6 bits, 6 bit data may not, 6 bits images may not record slight change in the reflection or emittance. But for the same area, if we record in 11 bits, definitely even minute changes in reflection or emittance can be recorded at. So this, this uh, provides a better radiometric resolution. So what higher the bit number, higher the radiometric resolution, lower the bit number, lower the spatial resolution. So number of bits determine the radiometric resolution of an image. For example, an 8 bit digital number ranges from 0 to 255, uh, 0 is also counted that is why 2 power 8 minus 1 total number of 256. So if I display in black and white or in grey, grey scales then 0 will be my one extreme colour that is black and 255 would be my white colour and rest of the values will be in between 0 and 255. While an 11 bit number ranges from 0 to 
2447. The same will apply minus 1, but because 0 is counted, so 0 is also a value here. So, uh, that means 2048 uh, 20, total number of variations can happen in an 11 bit image. Whereas, in case of 8 bit image, total number of variations can be 255, 256, not 255, 256. And if it is a 6 bits image, then total number of variations can be 64 between 0 to 63. 0 is counted. So, and this detected intensity value that is the pixel value needs to be scaled and quantized to fit within the ranges of value. So, this quantization is what is radiometric uh, resolution and uh, in a sensor this is radiometrically calibrated image and the actual intensity value can be derived from the pixel digital number and this is what it is done when we go for quantitative remote sensing this is what it is done. So, the address of a pixel uh, location is uh, denoted by its rows and column numbers in two dimensional image. Uh, but when we go for georeferencing that means bringing geographic coordinates and image then we can also address with geographic coordinates but as long as image is not georeferenced but gen then generally we refer in terms of rows and columns so location of a pixel is decided based on rows and columns and there is a one to one correspondence between column a row address of a pixel and the geographical coordinates and that is latitude longitude of a imaged location. And in order to be useful and uh, the exact geographical location of each pixel on the ground must be derived from its row and column indices and this is what it is done in the uh, georeferencing. So, given the image geometry and the satellite orbital parameters. A, 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 a level 1 uh, kind of uh, georeferencing can also be done uh, using orbital parameters of a sensor of a satellite. Using that a, a, I, I can say a crude level of uh, georeferencing can be done, but if, uh, if we want to have a more accurate georeferencing or uh, geographic coordinates to address individual pixels then uh, a very um, accurate georeferencing is required. So, it will depend uh, uh, it will depend on spatial resolution of an image and our requirements also, but techniques are available that means the georeferencing techniques are available to uh, transfer our images from geometric domain to geographic domain. Now, when we go for multi layer images, so far what we have been discussing is the single image, single image and no other uh, not colored images, but uh, generally we also use uh, colored images and uh, by uh, you know that when co colored images are created we need at least uh, 3 primary colors and uh, respective uh, bands or channels of a sensor to create a color image. So, several types of measurements may be made from the ground area covered by a single pixel that means several types here means in different wavelength of the same area and each type of measurement forms an image which carries some specific information about the area. Very soon we will be seeing an example of a real image also real colored image. So, by stacking these uh, different bands or these images from the same area together taken at the same time by a sensor by a multispectral scanner or sensor multi layer images can be formed or colored images I, I should say and each component image is a layer is a multi layer image. So, a, here multi layer images can also be formed by combining images obtained from different sensors and other uh, subsidiary data that is a different thing uh, that means uh, you can have a, a of the same area an image uh, by the same sensor of two different dates or you have you can have same area uh, covered by two different sensors that two you can combine. So, because these are digital uh, 
matrix, two dimensional matrix, all kinds of operations are possible. For example, a multi layer image can consist of three layers, one from spot multi spectral image, maybe another one for ER synthetic aperture radar that is radar image, here is the uh, visible channel and perhaps a layer consisting of digital elevation map ADM which is not uh, directly we cannot say as an image that is a grid or a, a, a another type of rasta. So, that is also possible. So, multi spectral image consists of a few image layers, each layer represents an image acquired at a particular wavelength band. So, there are two things now, one is multi layered, multi layer images I have uh, uh, told you that it can for single uh, for different individual layers we can have individual de, uh, data or images from different sensors or maybe from same sensors, but of different date. But when we go for multi spectral images, then what we are talking the sensor is uh, sensor is same, wavelengths are different and then we create a color composites. So, for example, a spot HRV sensor, a spot is a satellite, HRV is a sensor operating in a multi spectral mode detects radiation in three wavelengths and which are the green band of visible, the red and the near infrared. All three we can use and create color composites also. So, a single spot multi spectral scene consists of three intensity images in three wavelength bands and in this case each pixel of the scene or an image has three intensity values corresponding to three bands and we assign then different colors these RGB out of these three colors to different uh, bands also. Whereas, a multi spectral iconos image consists of four bands blue, green, red and near infrared while a landsat multi spectral image consists of seven bands, but uh, we can use at a time only three to create a color composite. And the more recent satellite sensors are capable of acquiring images at many more wavelength bands. But it means when we started uh, in 1972 the first Landsat uh, one and it had the sensor MSS, it has only 4 channels. Now, latest series of a Landsat, Landsat 8 OLI series, it is having now 8 channels. So, things have changed there. For example, MODIS sensors on board the NASA Terra satellite consist of 36 spectral bands and uh, uh, whereas NOAA VHRR also provides uh, uh, for thermal channels provides the spatial resolution 1 kilometer is having just 5 channels. So, it depends on how uh, where the channels are located, how narrow they are and of course, sensor to sensor. And so, uh, this we are talking about super spectral images when we are having choices of many channels rather than just 4 as in the beginning. So, bands have narrower bandwidth in super channels or super spectral and having finer spectral characteristics of target to be captured by the sensor. So, we started with multi layer images, we started with multi spectral images, we have now multi and uh, super spectral images and uh, of course, uh, then hyper spectral. This is the latest in the series. Hyper spectral images uh, for even for the same uh, bandwidth, we might be having hundreds of channels. As here it is uh, shown that uh, if I uh, plot, uh, if I plot uh, wavelength uh, versus uh, say intensity value or pixel value for a vegetated area as shown here in this schematic, then I will get this kind of curve. So, hyperspectral image data usually consists of a over a 100 contiguous spectral bands, sometimes 256 channels in a high spectral hyperspectral image forming a three dimensional or two spatial dimensions and one spectral dimension image cube, very thin bands. In, uh, in case of uh, if I give example of Landsat MSS 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 that means the bandwidth of uh, a channel is 0 0.1 micrometer 
and whereas in case of a hyperspectral the width of a channel can be 0.5 nanometer so that kind of uh, bandwidth we are talking very very narrow bands and continuous uh, spectral coverage no gap in between so each pixel is associated with a complete spectrum of imaged area as i have just shown that one pixel uh, and if you go for uh, the same location pixel in all bands say 256 bands then you can exactly get the curve and for these uh, because these hyperspectral images are very good to create these spectral curve response curves for different minerals rocks and different kind of object different kind of vegetation different kind of water bodies conditions and so on so forth because continuously you are having one band or another but in case of like mss landsat etm oli series all they will have gaps in between so that's the biggest advantage with hyperspectral images and the hyperspectral images generally are of relatively high resolution but not very high resolution so high spectral resolution of hyperspectral images enables better identification of land covers but uh, one band may have almost the similar characteristics of the next band but if you leave some gap like here then you get suddenly a high reflection there also hyperspectral images what they are recording the precise spectral information which contained in a hyperspectral image which allows us uh, for better characterization and identification of targets and hyperspectral images have potential in uh, those fields uh, which we require very precision uh, uh, precision uh, with the uh, images so that we can use to monitor like in case of precision agriculture we can monitor the type health and moisture status and maturity of crops because you know that crops uh, changes their uh, the group when they are growing and then they ripening and uh, different at uh, different moisture status and uh, the reflection in infrared changes very uh, re from successively so if we are having hyperspectral images of that area then we can we can see that of course the types of vegetation health of the vegetation the moisture status and of course the maturity of crops it is only possible when you are having continuous and narrow bands and narrow bands i am talking of having a nanometer thickness rather than micrometer thickness so that that is uh, very important for many applications also in mineral exploration in oil exploration in water quality assessment in many areas hyperspectral images are very very useful also in the coastal management how for example monitoring of phytoplanktons pollutants or pollution and bathymetry changes also it is possible to detect easily with hyperspectral images the problem with hyperspectral images is too much data to handle too much data to handle and therefore people then from 256 channels they will reduce to just few channels by employing mathematics or some other techniques so that that is the one big problem with hyperspectral images second and that may be we may come in future but currently that problem is there that a very narrow strip is recorded maybe of 5 km wide by airborne sensors and that kind of thing because uh, you need to have uh, if uh, it's a trade off if you go for very high resolution images spatial resolution images then the the swath or the strip which is covered of the surface of the earth becomes very narrow and when you, you go for relatively coarser resolution images you can cover a large part of the earth for example if i if i go for a noa avhrr example then it has got a spectral spatial resolution of 1 km and it covers about it 2800 km swath so in one image that is covering about 2800 km uh, wide area of the earth 
whereas if i have um, and uh, in, you know no ihr are having 1 km spatial resolution and if i from if i go from 1000 m spatial resolution to so 1 m like iconos then the swath or the strip of the earth which is covered by uh, iconos sensor is just of 11 km wide so and uh, though you have improved on spatial resolution 1000 to 1 m but at the same time you have reduced the coverage instead of 2800 km you have reduced to 11 km so this uh, hyperspectral images also are having compromise in terms of the coverage or footprint or path or swath width so the swath width generally is very small with hyperspectral images so if your area of study is quite large then uh, you need to have Uh, several uh, orbit images uh, to study that entire area but if it is spatial resolution is little lower which is generally it is around 5 uh, or 6 meters in case of hyperspectral still the swath is very narrow so currently hyperspectral imagery or images is not commercially available from the satellites this is the current state most of the hyperspectral research or work or examples which you see is all airborne hyperspectral images and they there are experimental satellite sensors acquires hyperspectral images but they go on board of uh, different satellites like hyperion sensor on board of eo1 satellite and the cris sensor on board of esa prabo satellite but uh, data may not be available very easily now Uh, this covers uh, um, uh, a sort of in summary almost what we have discussed that this is the example of monochrome image this is the example of multispectral image or a colored image rgb r rgb stands for red green and blue combination image this is the example of spectroscopy and that means uh, ground based spectrometer using ground based spectrometer and you can have the uh, this spectral response curve you go for multi spectral images that is very common remote sensing even today also you go for hyper spectral as you can see here the point which i was mentioning earlier that between one band and another here you are seeing some gap that means one band in a one sensor another band may be there may be some gap but here you don't see any gap it's a continuous spectral coverage by hyperspectral images now when 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 we want to uh, study a certain part say here uh, the example is here may be water body then this is how uh, when we go in different channels in a blue part we see this kind of reflection in a, a green part we see this kind of reflection and in the red part we are seeing this kind of which this information is coming from different channels in order to have a curve from that whereas in case of uh, non continuous spectral coverage like multi spectral coverages which you are seeing here then you will have a response something like that for blue then there is a gap for green then there is a gap between green and red not a continuous like this here so hyperspectral definitely having advantage from spectral coverage point of view but from a uh, ground coverage point of view still and uh, there is a limitation but i hope that in future and uh, these limitations uh, will not be there and we may be having very uh, you know uh, very large images covering a, a wide swath of the earth in a continuous spectral bands so this brings to the end of this discussion thank you very much